I was just telling one of my guys a little bit ago, I said, man, these Ravens, they don't know any other way to do it, but to just have all this craziness that transpires literally like every single game, pretty much. When we as Ravens fans, okay, Pookie, I love you too. When we as Ravens fans actually watch a calm game from the Ravens, where the Ravens is, is, is won decisively, even when it's lost decisively, uh, we get surprised. We get really surprised because we're just so used to craziness, especially this year. And yesterday against the Vikings, it was no different. Uh, but team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts uh, from the game we all watched between the Ravens and the Vikings, uh, which was just madness. It was madness. Uh, before we get into this video, I got to let y'all know it's going to be a very busy week. Very, very busy week. So if you see a little extra videos than you're used to, my apologies. Because we got a lot to cover and we only have like three days to cover it. Uh, because the Dolphins game is on Thursday. Um, so that should be very, uh, should be fun. Should be a fun one. Uh, and it, it being down here in Miami, you know, like them Florida Ravens, they get to go do their thing. Anyway, um, we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, for this game, though, I'm um, against the Vikings. The Ravens, they, the slow starts. The slow starts happen again, and that's just, it's never good. It's never a good thing. Um, when you have a slow start, whether you're going against a good team, whether you're going against a bad team, it's never good. Because this just makes stuff harder, that much harder for your defense. It makes the, that, this stuff that much harder for your offense. It just makes stuff harder just for your team because you're not putting points on the board. So the Ravens, they, uh, they got off to a slow start. But it was a mix of things. Um, there was a mix of bad play calling. And y'all know I've been one of the biggest Giro fans this year. Um, but he's had his, he had his, he's had his uh, mishaps. In, in yesterday's game in the first quarter, Oh man, yeah, like anybody that was watching the live stream, y'all saw that like the Ravens, there was one play in the first quarter. Early on in the game, I think it might have been the first or second drive, where Ravens came out in this like run heavy package. They had Patrick Ricard, I think they had Tomlinson, they had Josh Oliver, um, they had Le'Veon Bell, and they had like one receiver. And that one receiver was out wide. Everybody else was around the line of scrimmage. Of course, Patrick Ricard, he was lined up at fullback, and Le'Veon Bell at running back, and I think Tomlinson was in the backfield too, whatever the formation was. Um, and then they changed it. And they change it to, to five wide. So they, they spread it out. Empty backfield. And I'm like, why, why are we lining up those guys? Like, we going five wide with that? Mm, yeah, yuck. I didn't like it at all. Um, I forgot. I, I, I just didn't like it so much I forgot what the result of that play in, ended up even being. Probably Lamar ended up taking off. Because Lamar was taking off literally all game long. Because he, he had no protection. He had no protection. But, in my opinion, I think the reason he had no protection was because... They didn't establish a run game early on. They didn't. And um, now, they, Devontae Freeman, one thing I did like about yesterday's game, in the long run, not, in the, not early on, but in the long run, they established Devontae Freeman as the number one back, even though you know they love Le'Veon Bell so much. They love Le'Veon Bell. And Le'Veon Bell made some plays toward the end of the game now. But Devontae Freeman, like they, I think Devontae Freeman had like 13 carries and Le'Veon Bell had like 11 I think it should have it should have been, in my opinion. I'm no offensive coordinator, but I think it should have been Devontae Freeman with like 16, 17. Maybe Le'Veon Bell with like six, something like that. Um, and, and, of course, you can't just go by numbers and be like, all right, in this game, this running back is going to get this amount of carries. But what I'm saying is that I feel like Dave, I was about to say Davion Bell. I, I feel like Devontae Freeman should be the guy, the clear-cut guy, their, their, their number one runner. Not saying that Le'Veon Bell shouldn't get his too, but Devontae Freeman should be getting the bulk of the carries because he is there. Same thing I've been saying. He's their best runner that will actually get opportunity. Because, you know, Tyson Williams, he just, when he's out there, we'll, like it's like, oh, okay, you know he ain't getting the ball. Like, they, they're done with Tyson Williams, man. Like, that's why I'm, I was so surprised that he's still here. I really thought the trade deadline was going to come and go and Tyson Williams was going to go. Not because he's a bad player. I thought the Ravens were just done, especially after that fourth down play against the Bengals. I thought they were done with him. And, I mean, they are pretty much done with him. they just keeping him around. Like, they, they, he probably just a hold over till Latavius Murray gets healthy. Then once Latavius Murray gets healthy, he'll probably go right back to being inactive. I just, you, you could tell that they are just over him. They are over him. They want him to have no parts of the ball. They're done with him. Uh, and it's an unfortunate situation. Um, but they, it's over. Uh, but anyway, Devontae Freeman, he, he had a really good game yesterday. I would say that was his best game as a Raven so far. 
Um, Le'Veon Bell, like I said, he of course made an impact too. Got his touchdown. Uh, he's after Devontae did all the dirty work. Le'Veon Bell went and got the touchdown. But Le'Veon Bell, like I said, he contributed too, uh, which was nice. Um, and and I just hope that the Ravens moving forward. They can stop doing this where they got to try to make every running running back happy except Tyson Williams because, you know, they don't want to make him happy. But where they got to make Devontae Freeman happy and Le'Veon Bell. But I, I want them to establish a hot hand. And, again, they did that more toward the end of the game yesterday. But I think that if they did that early on, that would help out the offensive line so much because you, you saw how the offensive line toward the end of the game, they were doing a lot better because the Ravens were running a lot better. Early on, um, they were passing a lot, and they've been passing a lot this whole season. Um, but Lamar just he could not be he wasn't comfortable like pretty much all game long. He was not comfortable. He was running for his life all game long. And the scary part about that, the frustrating part about that is, is that the Ravens, what can they do about the offensive line? What can you do? I mean, it's it's tough. Like you, you if you add somebody, are they gonna be better than what you have? Possibly, but you'll never know. Uh, they did just sign Ogbui, and I did see him out there for, uh, what play did he come out with? Was it for a field goal? I, f I forgot what play he came out there for, but he was out there like a little tiny bit, but obviously not as a starter. So I wonder if they'll incorporate him somehow, some way. Probably not because, I mean, when you're winning, a lot get co gets covered up. So I wonder if they would be willing to make a change even though they are winning. Um, but anyway, we'll see what happens with that. Um, but yeah, with the offensive line, it's it's been the same story. It's just been it's, it's been a lot of bad. It's been a lot of bad. It's been, it ain't been all bad now. It ain't been all bad. Cause again, once they they mixed it up and they 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 successfully mixed it up. That's the thing. When they successfully mixed it up, so that, so they had success running the ball and some success passing the ball. That's when the offensive line was able to do better. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind uh, as the Ravens move forward. Um, with the offensive line and, and I just one thing that I hope it's kind of scary to think about but you think about especially last year last year they were able to scrape by and whatnot with the offensive line that they had which was a problem all year from from week one and then in the playoffs it got exposed to the max and they kicked him out that's the reason that Lamar Jackson ended up leaving the game with a concussion that's the reason why on that pick six he, he ain't have no time to throw that's the reason why on the play before the pick six, I think Hollywood was wide open, but Lamar was too busy getting hit. So it's the offensive line. It um, Hopefully it's not that situation in the long run, but we just see how everything plays itself out. Um, Lamar, his game, um, he just started this game shaky. Oh, but back to, you know what, let's back up before we get to Lamar. Uh, which, well, we could still stay on Lamar. Um, he, he was sailing some passes. And again, he was um, he was running for his life uh, from start to finish. But early on, he was sailing some passes, uh, overthrowing some guys. He overthrew Hollywood in the flat. He overthrew Mark Andrews. Um, but when, on the overthrow to Mark Andrews, like he was trying to fit it. There was a defender in front of Mark Andrews, and there was a defender behind Mark Andrews, and there was a defender to the side of Mark Andrews. So Lamar was trying to fit it in right in there, but he ended up sailing it. So I was like, okay, well, better that than. Uh, than what it could have been um so it because he could have thrown an inter interception which he did right right before halftime uh but on that play he didn't he just sailed it but w with everything <clears throat> and even though the ravens they didn't deserve it they got that horse collar call like we were talking about so the ravens were like all right we we got bailed out so let's let's take advantage of it lamar throws a perfect pass to mark andrews touchdown touchdown it's like okay we getting ready to go like this Mark Andrews drops it. And it's like, man, like, <laughs> ever since National Tight Ends Day, <laughs> Mark Andrews, he ain't really been showing out. Now, he did finish yesterday with, like, I think, like, five catches, 45 yards, something like that. Uh, so, he ended the day with, with an all right day. But um, that's money right there. That's money. You got you to gotta come down with those. And I know he ain't going to catch every single pass. He's going to have drops. It happens. But it's like when when... Lamar, that when Ravens have this history this season of starting off so slow, that's a chance that you have to not start off slow. Start off with a touchdown, and he dropped it. But uh, it, it it was what it was. Um, so Lamar, uh, overall yesterday, he had a um, he 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 had a, a good game. Definitely wasn't a great game. He had a good game though. 
Um, but he, you could tell he just he had to do a lot. He had to do a lot, and he went over 100 yards rushing. Um, had the three touchdowns. Had the two interceptions. One of those interceptions was on uh, Devontae Freeman for not engaging with the guy. And, and y'all know I initially thought that okay, well Devontae Freeman he was fine. Like he was, he he, he was he was in the right for just waiting for Anthony Barr to 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 engage with him. And maybe Anthony Ball was, like, playing contained to where he was just staying there just in case Lamar tried to take off or something. But, no, uh, Devontae, I was, I was corrected. Uh, Devontae Freeman should have engaged with him. Um, and that that wouldn't have been an interception. Or it would have been a less, way less of a chance of, of an interception. But that was just a great play by Anthony Ball. That was such a great play. Um, but, yeah, that, and what, and, and that was an overtime, too. That was an overtime. And, and, and when that interception happened, I was like, oh, boy. We got to rely on this defense, even though the defense, they had, when it, when it mattered the most, most. Not when it mattered the most, because when it mattered the most, like, in the fourth quarter with Lamar and the Ravens, they got the touchdown drive to put them ahead by seven. It was like, all right, defense, just close it out. And they didn't close it out. Um, but when it mattered the most, most, the Ravens defense, they came through. And I was, I was pleasantly surprised uh, at, uh, at them making a stop after that Lamar Jackson interception. Because the Ravens were moving the ball. They were moving. Um, but, oof, that, that, that was a very scary moment. Uh, but anyway, in the, in the other interception that he threw right before half, again, Lamar threw these interceptions, and the defense, they came through. Because Lamar, on the, the first interception he threw right before halftime, um, that set the Vikings up nice. They had time. They had good field position, but the defense held them to three. That was so big. That was so big. Uh, but then Lamar, of course, he threw the, uh, what, three touchdowns. There was one to Devontae Freeman. One to, all to, like, unlikely people to be catching touchdowns. But that's what you need when it ain't, when other people are being held from the end zone, from being held from scoring, you need other guys to step up and make plays. And you need your offensive coordinator and your quarterback to get other guys involved and to see other guys and be like, all right, they watching Bateman extra close. They watching Hollywood. They watching Andrews. All right, let's find somebody else. So Duvernay with the, the, the great catch in the back of the end zone and Lamar with the great throw. Patrick Ricard, who literally on that drive, he took it over. He took that whole drive over. And he was catching one hand and all that, running people over. Okay, Project Pat. And then Devontae Freeman, who he had a really good game too. Um, like I said, as a runner. And then, of course, he got his little passing touchdown too. And he was some, somebody I wasn't expecting to get a passing touchdown. I was not thinking about him on that play. I was like, okay. I wasn't thinking about him. Vikings weren't thinking about him. Ravens were like, okay, we know that. Nobody's thinking about him. Let's get him. And they got him. Perfect. Um, what else? <laughs> See, that's the, uh, that's the benefits of being able to do the video outside. You get a loogie from your little waking up in the morning, and boom. He just go spit it. Anyway, um, <laughs> I know it was going to be somebody. Oh, why would you leave that in the video? Man, you should have cut that out. You should have edited that out. It's so gross, man. I don't ever have loogies. I have this perfect body system that just doesn't have any loogies. That's so gross. Anyway, um, shout out to you, whoever you are in advance. Um, Hollywood. <laughs> oh, Hollywood. He had a game. He had himself a game. Went over 100 yards, um, didn't get a touchdown, uh, but he went over 100 yards. Key contributor, no drops, um, came back to the ball, attacked the ball, uh, got a lot of yak and engaged. He, he brought on contact. Because a lot of times people are so used to Hollywood, oh, you see a defender coming, he run out of bounds. You see a defender coming, he dropped to the ground. Hollywood said, no, not yesterday. Yesterday he was all about that contact, all about it. And I loved it, loved it. it great game from Hollywood, especially in clutch time. Especially in clutch time. Um, Rashad Bateman missed the first down. Uh, again, looks smooth. He, it looks like he's been playing with these guys forever. So, And he's a rookie. He does not look like a rookie to me. He really doesn't. Doesn't look like a rookie receiver. And, and for it's crazy to see a rookie receiver make an immediate impact despite missing the first five weeks of the regular season. It's crazy. It's rookie receiver. Like... Sammy Watkins and Sammy Watkins wasn't even playing yesterday. They said he had a, some thigh issue that came that happened before the game, and they were like, "Okay, we'll rest you." But this rookie, rookie, rookie came through, man, and he's been coming through. So that's been a really good thing. Um, 
we talked about Mark Andrews already. Uh, Duvernay, we talked about him. Prochet, him and Miles Boykin, um, they weren't involved in the uh, the offense at all. They were out there for a couple plays or whatever, but nothing crazy. Um, yeah, and that was that. Uh, penalties, there was some there was some little rinky dinky calls, man. Um, but penalties were hurting the Ravens. Ravens, a lot of times, they are. Uh, they can be their own worst enemy, um, and it, those penalties they'll they'll bite you in the butt, man. And, and a lot of times when Ravens get a big play, I know a lot of a lot of us as fans we start looking around like, oh, okay, where's the flag? Cause I don't want to get too excited because I know a flag is probably coming, and then if it doesn't happen, we're like, okay, let's go. So, oh, and shout out to Rashad Bateman for getting the literally the first of the year. The first defensive pass interference call that went for the Ravens all year long. Because, you know, we don't get the like Lamar a couple weeks ago. I think we got the first rough in the passer all year, ever since 2019. Ever since 2019. You mean to tell me Lamar ain't been rough? Lamar ain't been late. He ain't had no late hits. We got the first rough in the passer since 2019 a couple weeks ago. And, and now we got the first pass interference uh this th in this game and i'm like wow that's crazy that's crazy it's week nine and that's the first one, week nine it's wild man anyway um that's offense yeah that's that sums up the offense defense i don't know special teams justin tucker game winning field goal you know justin tucker he just it's, it's one of those things where in the back of my mind I'm like okay i know justin tucker got this but at the same time there's no such thing as a gimme, and we've we've seen crazy stuff happen. It's been a wild season, uh, but Justin Tucker he held it down and he got it, so it was good. That was a game winner. I think they said that was his tenth or twelfth game winner, something like that. But I mean, he doesn't made a lot of game winners. We already know that, um, so that was a nice thing to see. Uh, so oh, special teams, the Duvernay ain't really getting many kick returns, but special teams uh, they gave up a kick return for a touchdown. And it's like coming out the half, we're thinking, all right, Ravens, they down by seven, I believe. Um, they just got a touchdown right before halftime. It's like, all right, you're down by seven. Vikings getting the ball. Yeah, that's cool, but all you got to do is stop them. You get the ball, but all right, let's go, Ravens. Let's go. And the thing with them, Pookie, what you eating, man? Spit it out. Spit it out. What you eating? Anyway, we're thinking, all right, the Ravens. They, they, all they got to do, they got to come out and stop the Vikings. And with the Vikings, all their plays, the, the big stuff has been cut. They, they, they just been getting these big plays. That's the only way they've been scoring. When they got to grind it out, they got to grind out these drives, they don't score. They score from these big plays. They score from a 50-yard uh, touchdown pass to Justin Jefferson. They scored on the um, – well, Dalvin Cook got that 66-yard run, and then they finish it off with the, the Kirk Cousins QB sneak. But it's like, all right, cool. We, we stop the big plays, we'll be straight. <laughs> Big play. Come out of halftime. Kick return for a touchdown. I was like, oh, boy. Wow, man. And it was just like, wow. But I, I, I did not think that it would be over then. I'm like, oh, Ravens down by 14. Oh, okay, cool. That's fun. And I, I kept saying during the stream, because there's a lot of people saying that the game was over. But I kept saying during the stream, like, okay, that it, this, this, everything that's happening will just make the comeback that much sweeter. It'll make it that much sweeter. And, and it did. Um, Ravens again down by 14 down by multiple scores and they end up coming back and winning and that the, this narrative of Lamar Jackson can't come back can't play from behind it's been dead but it's like really really dead so they're gonna come up with new stuff though you know how it goes anyway um, defense defense what Pookie what are you eating man what are you eating I keep hearing her chew on something but I ain't giving no food. What you eating? What you eating? What you eating? Come on, man. She is so annoying. Anyway, um, defense. Defense in this game. Oh, you got camera shy or something? Don't try to kiss me, man. Defense in this game. Um, that. I, I I knew Justin Jefferson was gonna get his. Um, 
I figured he was going to get a touchdown this game. Uh, I figured we would see at least one gritty dance, but I didn't think he would go over 75 yards. And, and all, that, all that stuff happened. And the way that it happened, it was kind of sad. Uh, like, uh, in the, I don't know if that was more on Marlon Humphrey. I think it was, it was a mix of being on Marlon Humphrey and Chuck Clark. Because Marlon Humphrey, he just, his footwork, his footwork, he just got caught slipping. He just looked lost. He was like, whoa, 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 you, you going past me like that, bro? And then Chuck Clark, he like, he was running up. And again, I think I think because Chuck Clark, he's so used to blitzing. So it's probably in his mind, like, all right, blitz, 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 blitz. I'm an outside linebacker. I'm not a safety. I'm an outside linebacker. I'm not a safety. I blitz. That's my main thing to do, blitz. So he's so used to that in wing system that he, he was trying to blitz from being a deep safety. So he, he started running, and Justin Jefferson was like, oh, okay, cool, bye. Ran right past both of them, touchdown. Beautiful pass, beautiful catch. <laughs> beautiful gritty, by the way. Um, but other than that, he didn't really do anything. Well, he did have that nice fourth down catch in the end of the fourth quarter that set up the Adam Thielen touchdown. But he, other than those two plays, he was pretty much, he was not a factor. Now, obviously, he made those big plays, but he wasn't like this dude that was just killing Marlon all game, just killing Anthony Avery. He, he wasn't. And even Adam Thielen, he wasn't an impact player either uh, until the, except that one play, that touchdown. And it was a little push off there too. Um, but they so besides those couple of plays that they did give up, um, Ravens actually did a pretty good job of holding those guys down. They really did. Overall, in the grand so like when you look at the the box score, you will see touchdown Justin Jefferson, touchdown Adam Thielen, and they so they did get this. But if you actually watch the game, that's why numbers don't always tell the whole story. Um, but Ravens overall, like except for those couple of plays, overall they held those guys. Um, Dalvin Cook, who scared me because just watching, I didn't really, I know who Dalvin Cook is, I know what he can do, but my first time being able to actually watch him this year was when I was watching the Vikings and Cowboys game, and this dude, like his burst is so quick, it is so quick and it's scary, and I was thinking, oh boy. Like, okay, Brandon Williams is out. Um, but even with Brandon Williams in Ravens run defense, it ain't been the Ravens run defense that we know. Um, it's been a pretty big yikes, man. Um, and I'm just, I'm worried about him. I, I'm, I'm worried about Dalvin Cook because I know um, what he does. I know what he's capable of. And the, the way this dude shoots through the hole, the way that he got this, this, this crazy burst. It's wild, and, and when he's healthy, that's been his only knock as a running back. Only knock as a running back has been his health. That's it. When he's healthy, top five all day. You already know that. Top five. No question. And he showed that yesterday. But even with him, he had over 100 yards. But when you think about it, that 66-yard run, that 66-yard, besides the 66-yard run, the Ravens also did a good, and now again, we can't take away that 66-yard run because it happened. But besides that, Ravens did a pretty good job of holding him down. They did. So Ravens, in this game, the problem wasn't tackling. It wasn't. You, and Josh, shout out to Josh Barnes. Kept saying it all day yesterday. We, we need 11 Josh Barnes on defense, and we, we'd be locked down. Josh Barnes, I was talking to my guy JT about it last night. His um, his smarts, his smarts make up for uh, any lack of athleticism, um, any lack of speed. Like my guy JT said, uh, his his smarts just they they make up for so much because he if if you you catch him slipping, he, you get you get a step on him, he ain't gonna catch you. He's not gonna catch you, but <laughs> he's gonna put himself in the best position before you get a step on him to catch you. And that's Josh Bynes in a nutshell, man. He almost had a pick yesterday. In the right place, right time. He made so many key tackles and stops. Right place, right time. And is Josh Bynes, like, faster than Patrick Queen, than Dalvin Cook? No. Mm -mm. Is he faster than any of those tight ends or receivers out there? No. But he's smart. He knows the game. He obviously does a lot of homework. He studies. And right place, right time. Josh Bynes has really, like, saved this defense. He has really saved this linebacking group. Josh Bynes is right now our best linebacker. That's not a shot at Patrick Queen. It's not a shot at Malik Harrison. It's not a shot at Chris Board. I mean, C.J. Board. No, Chris Board. C.J. Board. C.J. Board. Chris Board? 
Man, now I forgot his name. Maybe I'm getting him mixed up with CJ Mosley. Maybe it is Chris Board. Wow, I forgot his name. I think it is Chris Board. Wow, I'm tripping. Um, but that's not a shot at any of our linebackers, Christian Welch. It's not a shot at anybody, but Josh Bynes is our best linebacker right now. He's our best. Um, and with that being said, uh, he he has been showing it. And, and it's been a good thing that the Ravens end up signing him to the practice squad. It's been a good thing that they end up promoting him to the active roster. And and when you think about it, this dude, been, he's been playing since Ray Lewis was playing. He's been playing since Ray Lewis was playing. So Josh Bynes has been around. He got experience. Before he was the young linebacker. He was the young linebacker stepping in for Ray Lewis. Now he's the older linebacker stepping in for Patrick Queen. So... He, the, the torch was passed um, So anyway uh, He was excellent um, he, he had a really really good game Patrick Queen made that excellent play. Oh man I loved it When Patrick Queen shot through that gap And, and caught Dalvin Cook in, Way in the backfield For like a 7 yard loss Something like that It was nice to see That's, that, that's them confidence boosters That he needs man That's what he needs um, Now what the Ravens do after this season at Mike Linebacker, because that's the linebacker that's calling everything, that's calling it, that, that, that's, that's, that's regulating everything, and he's, he's just making stuff happen. That's, um, that, that's the linebacker that's sort of the, the brain of the defense. So what they do past this season, we'll see. But Josh Bynes has helped so much, and we are very appreciative of that. Um, what else? Um... Marlon Humphrey, Anthony Averett, they had pretty good games yesterday. Uh, besides the, 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 the Justin Jefferson 50-yard touchdown catch, Marlon Humphrey, he had a pretty quiet game yesterday, and that's always a good thing. He had a, he had a nice breakup on – he had a couple of nice breakups. I forgot which receivers they were on. One was on the tight end. One was on the tight end, and there was another one on a receiver. I forgot which receiver it was, though. But, he, again, nice quiet game. Anthony Averett, same thing. Overall, had a nice, quiet game. That's always a good thing. Uh, Deshaun Elliott, he made a couple nice plays and then lost him for the year, which is unfortunate. Uh, but now it's Brandon Stevens' time. Uh, Brandon Stevens, I got to watch film on him from college uh, because I'm not sure if he's a rangy. Because I know he played running back. I know he played cornerback. I don't think he played safety in college. I don't believe. Um, but we, we're going to see if he is that rangy safety. That because he's smart, he made a really nice play on Adam Thielen in the back of the end zone. But we're gonna see if he got that range. We're gonna see if he got that range to to, to cover the back end of the field, uh, just in case the team want to go up top. Now nah, we we we're gonna see and then see if he got that range. If if he's is he playing in, in the deep middle of the field, we're gonna see if Marlon Humphrey gets beat and the quarterback goes up top, or Anthony Avery gets beat and quarterback goes up top. If he can make it over there in time to make a play on the ball, so we we we're gonna see. I'm sure, like the Dolphins, who they ain't got nothing to lose. So this is this is definition of a trap game. But they ain't got nothing to lose, so they're gonna be doing whatever. So he he will be tested right away on Thursday. He will be tested. Trust me, he'll be tested. Um, so we'll see how things go. Anyway, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, our defensive line pass rush. Uh, it, mm, they early on they were getting pressure. Then later on in the game, like, yeah, because they, they were causing Kirk Cousins to throw a couple of little ducks up. Um, Ravens, ooh, they came a little bit close to making some interceptions, but they didn't make any of it, but it's all good. They, they, they got the win, and that's the most important thing. But the interceptions definitely would have made it a little better. Uh, but the, the pressure was getting there a little bit. And Justin Houston, we just waiting for him to get that. He, he just had half a sack away from getting 100. So hopefully in, in Miami, when they come down here to Miami, hopefully he can get that 100 sack. We can all celebrate with Justin Houston um, in Miami. We have a party, um, so yeah, man. That 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 was pretty much the game, man. That's pretty much the game. Again, the, the defense they gave up the big plays, and the big plays. If they would have eliminated the big plays, then I, I think they would have won this game more convincingly. But they obviously didn't. And shout out to the Vikings because they they came through. We knew the Vikings were not a bad team at all. They got a they got a rough record. They they were three and four uh, going into this game, but <clears throat> we knew they weren't a bad team. And when they were showing the graphics and everything of the Vikings, all their close games and whatnot, it was like, oh, man. Hey, we know what it's like to be a purple team that had these close, close, crazy, stressful games. But the difference between the Vikings and the Ravens is that the, the Ravens have, um, they've, they found more ways to win. They found more ways to win to, to really close these games out. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's, it's worked itself out. So, 
this team is they they six and two. They six and two, and it's crazy because um you uh you 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 think about it and a lot of people do it. They could be oh well this team could easily be two and six. They could be one and seven whatever, and they could be, but they're not. They're not. They're not. No matter how you want to flip it, no matter what you want to say, no matter you, oh well, they could be, oh well, they could have done, oh well, this should have happened, oh well, this could have. It didn't. None of that happened. They six and two. Um, so they they sitting sitting pretty. Not at the top of the AFC. They one of the top teams in the AFC. They are not at the top because the Titans. Oh, them Rams. Them Rams decided to pick the worst time to not show up. They should have had their, their not show up game like weeks ago against I don't care who, but they decided to do it against the Titans. Like man. Titans, ooh, that defense was nasty against them Rams. Nasty, nasty. But that was a big statement win for them. Great win for the Titans. So they still first place in the AFC because they didn't have their bye week. That's that's the biggest thing with the Titans and the Ravens. The Titans ain't have their bye week. Ravens had their bye week, so Ravens are like a game back. Like Ra- Ravens are six. Titans are seven and two. Ravens are six and two. So. Um, so I'll take it, man. I'll take it. To to be six and two at this point of the season. Um, next opponent is Dolphins and, and Bears, and then you go to a really you obviously can't overlook them too. But after the Dolphins and Bears, you go into a really hard part of the schedule. Oh my goodness, the the rest of the schedule is hard from there. Cause you got Browns twice, you got Steelers twice, you got Bengals once, you got Rams, you got Packers, and it's oh my goodness. <laughs> so yeah. Ooh, that's gonna be crazy, man. That's gonna be some tough, 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 tough games. But any given Sunday, baby, that's why they play the game. You gotta show up and show out, man. Do your thing. So shout out to the Ravens. Um, again, with the the coaching staff, despite any gripes that we got with the coaching staff, uh, or just speaking to me personally, because um, again, like I said, Greg Roman yesterday, there was some plays. And I'm like, what? What are they doing? I just do not like this. But they they cleaned it up. Wink in yesterday's game, um, he 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 cleaned it up. Uh, there was <laughs> like I said, I never expect him not to blitz. I never expect him to just stop blitzing completely. But he, that dude is always sending somebody, and and Tay Tay is a blitzer. Chuck Clark is always a blitzer. Um, he be he be sending those guys, man. Uh, but when it works, it works. So it's a beautiful thing. But again, it's all about balance and all about just being being smart with the blitz. Um, just recognizing what's working, what's not, making adjustments. It, it's all about that. So Wink again. I, I just yesterday in, in yesterday's game, and the defense has been a struggle all season. But in yesterday's game, I don't think he called a bad game. Um, the Ravens just they gave up some bad plays. They gave up some. Them, them big plays were killers, and then big plays were the difference in. And on with Vikings offense, and with uh, Vikings special teams too, that was a difference. Ray, I think Ravens could have really had this thing in the bag earlier. I don't think they would have had to go to overtime, but hey, the, again, it's part of the game. Vikings brought it, and boy, they 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 brought everything to the Ravens. The M&T Bank Stadium, they brought it all to the crib, and oof, they 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 were like, nah, if y'all gonna beat us, we about to stress y'all out, and they did that. So it was a fun game. It was a good time yesterday. Um, shout out to y'all. Appreciate y'all coming through on the stream. That is going to be uh, the last stream that we do until, because we're not going to stream the Dolphins game uh, for obvious reasons. But yeah, man. So I'm going to miss streaming with y'all. Might have to get a little stream in sometime here or there. Um, but we'll see how things go, man. So I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for listening. Um, and I hope that your Monday is starts off, ends off, and just your whole week, everything goes really, really great. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all taking the time just out of your day to just come chill, come vibe, come listen. Whether you had do listening at work, you listening at school, you listening on your way to work, on your way to school, while you going to pick up the kids, while you dropping off the kids, while you eating breakfast, why, why, whatever you're doing, having dinner, whatever. Well, I appreciate you listening with, with whatever you're doing. And you know what? Anybody yet, anybody that actually made it. Through this part of the video, cause I know this one went kind of long. I don't know how long we've been talking for, but um, anybody that's been listening uh, at, to this point of the video, just put just put in the comments what you're doing, why you're listening. Just put what you're doing. Are you eating breakfast? Are you having a snack? Are you doing homework? Are you studying for a test? Are you trying to go to sleep? You're like, oh man, this dude in gravy. He put me to sleep. Ugh. 
whatever you're doing just, just put what you're doing in the comment section i i, I just want to see i'm just curious anyway love y'all appreciate y'all the wind is picking up so i'm gonna go ahead and pack it up we out